Everyone raves about inverter generators' fuel efficiency, quiet operation, and clean power, but they also come with some hidden downsides, and they might not be the best fit for you. So before you spend thousands of dollars on one, let's break down the real pros and cons and why a conventional generator might actually be a better fit. And stick around to the end because I'll give you a tip that could save you thousands on your next generator purchase. The Ready Light, into the country. Hey, it's Nick Meisner with The Ready Life, where we help you become as independent as possible for basic necessities like water, heat, food, and power. And, you know, we went off the grid 25 years ago, and over the years I've used a lot of different generators as a backup for our solar system, including this Honda EU7000 for like three years or so, and then before that a Honda EM5000 for like nine years. So what's the difference? A conventional generator, like this Honda EM5000, works like this. The engine turns a alternator, which produces AC electricity, alternating current, like you have in your house, and the voltage and the frequency can fluctuate as the generator speed changes. So if it bogs down a little bit, the voltage and all of that can change. If it has a good voltage regulator like this one does, then that can help to keep it more stable, but it's still not perfect. Now an inverter generator like this Honda EU7000 works differently. The engine turns an alternator just like a standard generator does, but instead of sending power straight to your devices, it first converts the AC power into DC power using a rectifier. And that DC power then goes back to an inverter which converts it back into AC power. And this time it's ultra-stable voltage and frequency. Why does this matter? Well, inverter generators produce cleaner power that's safe for sensitive electronics like laptops, TVs, and medical equipment. Not that a good conventional generator will fry your equipment, it's just that the inverter generator's power is cleaner and safer for those devices that are really finicky about power. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. Let's talk about the big selling points of an inverter generator and where they fall short. One of the biggest advantages of a inverter generator is its variable speed engine. Unlike conventional generators that have to run full speed all the time, your inverter generator slows down if you're using less power. And this results in significantly less fuel consumption at times and also less wear and tear on the engine. So let's just compare the fuel consumption of the two. It's hard to compare apples to apples since they have different size fuel tanks and also their maximum power production isn't exactly the same. So I extrapolated a little bit and came up with this really rough comparison. As you can see, at full power there's little to no difference in power usage. But when you aren't running much of a load, the inverter generator's advantage becomes bigger and that adds up. So the EU7000 produces more power for less fuel, especially at lower loads. Because an inverter generator can slow down when it's not running under a heavy load, it's substantially quieter. And it also tends to have insulated compartment around the engine, further reducing engine noise. Since an inverter generator doesn't have to run at full speed all the time, it experiences less wear and tear over time, and fewer revolutions could equal longer engine life as well. Some inverter generators allow you to connect two together so that you can double the output. This means that you can start with a smaller generator and expand later on. You also get some redundancy. If one fails, you still have another one that could work. Also, you can have a lightweight portable unit for smaller jobs and combine it with another unit when you need more power. With Honda, the two generators must be the same model, but they do offer a companion model that has a 30 amp plug for larger loads. So with all these advantages, why would anyone want to skip an inverter generator? Well, here's why. The biggest reason is the price. A quality inverter generator costs much more than a similar standard model. The Honda EU7000 IS costs almost twice as much as the EM5000. And if you're on a tight budget, a regular generator might make a lot more sense. Another reason is the complexity in repairs. 
Inverter generators are more complex due to the extra electronics inside. So if you like to tinker and repair with things, you may not like dealing with an inverter system. And a conventional generator is simpler and easier to troubleshoot. If you plan to run your generator at full loads all the time, then you won't really benefit as much from an inverter generator's variable speed feature. A standard generator is already running at full speed, so you won't see major fuel savings. If all you need is raw power, then a conventional generator can save you quite a bit of money up front. So the final verdict, should you get an inverter generator? Well, really the answer depends on your needs. You should get an inverter generator if you want quiet generation and better fuel efficiency, you use sensitive electronics that need clean power, or you want the ability to daisy chain generators together for flexibility. But you should not get an inverter generator if you're on a tight budget, or if you prefer simpler technology that's easier to repair, or if you'll always be running the generator at full load where you wouldn't benefit from the variable speed feature of an inverter generator. Either way, investing in a high quality generator is key. A high-end conventional model with a good voltage regulator like the Honda EM5000 may be just right for most people and it could save you thousands. The EM5000 was a perfect starter generator for us. But if you're thinking about going off the grid like we did, or even just preparing for power outages, choosing the right generator is just one piece of the puzzle. That's why we put together a free class for you called The Real Cost of Going Off the Grid. It covers the biggest mistakes people make with backup power and solar power, plus how to cut solar costs by $10,000 or more. So just click the link in the description, or you can visit thereadylife.com forward slash off-grid cost to get free access. And I'll see you next time on The Ready Life.